Over the course of my walk, there's truly been four men um, who have really invested in me, in my family, and in my in my walk um, and teaching um, of who Jesus was and how to be a disciple and to disciple others. Um, Jim Collins spent just tons of time with me in my in my uh, early walk, um, teaching me just the fundamentals of of who Jesus uh, who Jesus was, who he is, and how we uh, continue to walk like him. And further along my walk, I uh, was taught by a gentleman named uh, Curry, Corey Erkenbrock, and he just he taught me how to persevere through uh, life struggles, to apply um, the teachings of the Bible um, to your life and your work and your interactions with people. And uh, another gentleman, Robin Reddick, he uh, spent just time and time again um, correcting me um, on beliefs. And um, when I thought I maybe knew something one way, um, he would point me back more towards a uh, biblical understanding of a situation or a uh, or a uh, solution that's biblically centered. Um, also, my friend Scott Miller, uh, and to this day, anytime I'm uh, I'm questioning something in the Bible, so anytime I'm looking for direction um, in a particular portion of my life. He's the person I, I generally turn to, and uh, and all these men um, to this day, you know, freely gave of their time, gave of their resources, and, and just truly loved on me, um, and showed tons of patience with me uh, during these times. So I'm forever grateful for those four men, and I'm glad to have them all in my life still today. Over the course of my life, I, I thought I was really smart, right? And I and and maybe I could outthink my way out of uh, problems. Maybe even outthink the Bible. And um, my friend Robin, who's actually a doctor of physics, a scientist, and um, I had a question of understanding. Um, basically, I thought I could rebuke some creation theory and I had a man um, with a greater worldly education of me, a greater biblical education of me, um, outline and teach and show me the error of the belief that I thought I had from the Discovery Channel. So I had no intention of coming to Christ when Christ found me. Um, I thought I knew God before Christ. Um, I had a God of my understanding at that point that was sufficient enough to help me overcome my substance abuse issues. And I'd heard a gentleman one time speak and he asked me a question. He says, how much God do you want to know? And that question stuck in my head for a long time. We fast forward to several years and uh, I'm a new father at this time and I want to inter introduce um, spiritual beliefs to my children, um, introduce them to a kind of a set of morals, what I thought I was doing, right? That uh, basically would teach them to be a better person than I was in this world. And so we thought that we would, we would find a church. Um, and we had, some, we had some prerequisites for what we were looking for in finding a church. First of all, I didn't want to hear them talk about Jesus, okay? That was the first, first prerequisite. The second was, I didn't want to hear about how bad I was um, and, and how what I do is wrong. And I, those are two things I did not want to hear. Um, and we... We searched around and um, we ended up sitting in uh, Hope Church and we, lo and behold, the pastor was up there and he spoke about Jesus. 
and I wasn't I didn't run out of the room he spoke about brokenness he spoke about the gospel um, he spoke the gospel and um, it piqued my interest I didn't run from him at that time and we began attending church that church there because I had an interest I said this kind of makes sense um, over the course of my life up to this point Many people had tried to share the gospel with me, and it was white noise. It made absolutely no sense to me. It seemed unnecessary. It seemed um, like a foreign language to me. And for the first time in my life, I feel like I, in the, sitting in that church, my ears were open and my heart was open, and I heard the gospel. And I continued to hear the gospel over the six, next five or six weeks over a sermon series. And at the end of that sermon series, uh, I decided that I was going to turn my life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. I can only give that credit to God that he opened my heart uh, and that it was my time to hear his message. And I feel he drew me to him. I said many people over the course of my life, because I was a wreck, were sharing the gospel with me. And it, that makes absolutely no sense for my problems. That makes no sense for my problems. And I came to a place where they're seeing this. It was almost like the light went on in an epiphany. Spiritual growth and action. Well, spiritual growth and action is, is truly just a daily, um, disciplined approach towards spending time with the Lord, uh, spending time in His Word, uh, a constant state of prayer in our decision making and our uh, in our direction. You know, the action truly is um, to the best of our ability and with the help of the Holy Spirit to carry ourselves um, in our best representation of how Jesus would have us be um, and always being willing to share the gospel, serve those in need, and yeah. So a really good example uh, that me and my wife both kind of refer to within our lives is uh, we, were, we were members there at Hope Church and a big part of the teaching there, there at Hope Church was, we we're gonna build you up and teach you, and we want you to leave. We're gonna send you out, we want you to go. And we'd been Christians for several years at this time, and, and we were really comfortable where we were at in our church, you know. The church was a comfortable environment for us. Um, we were being fed, we were, we were continually learning, we were, there were a lot of resources for the family and so forth. It just, everything seemed really perfect at that particular time. And um, the leader of our small group was actually um, interning with the church to launch, launch a church out of Hope, uh, another church. And um, we were asked um, by our small group leader if we would go with him to go plant a church. And everything that just stuck in the back of the head were the teachings that we were under at the time and um, putting your yes on the table and, and going with it. And we said yes. And uh, it was just kind of a, I don't want to call it a sacrifice, but it was sacrificing the comforts and our, the stability that we felt to go out and do something different for the Lord. The lifelong relationships and discipleships and the teaching I fell under while launching that church is, I wouldn't trade that time for anything in my life. Um, just the wealth of knowledge, the love, and patience. Patience is a good one because, it is a really important one because early in my walk, I, I was difficult. Um, I, I still had a lot of ideas and things that had to be fleshed out through the Bible. And, and I had kind, loving, patient men who were not going to let me off easy and uh, truly teach me. So my, my true passion in ministry is um, working with uh, 
people who have come from similar backgrounds that I do, from a background of, of substance abuse, um, and I feel like I have a, a unique experience to where I can uniquely help people in that particular field. And that's where I feel the most comfortable um, sharing uh, my experience and, and my experience with um, salvation and my experience with um, just the overcoming, the power being provided to overcome those situations. This otherworldly power that um, is just so awesome.